Y'all, in this video, I'm going to talk about pyramiding into a position, uh, otherwise known as cost averaging or mitigating risk. And I want to give you different ICT models for entering into a five minute swing uh, where some of the price points that you can add on more contracts or where you can put on the first one, the second, and the third. Um, I already have a bunch of drawings that I don't want to get rid of on the NASDAQ um, as I'm actually, you know, using them. So I want to go ahead and just use the ES here and uh, dissect a dissect a couple of a couple of these price swings um, on the five minute chart here on the ES and tell you the price points and using different models from ICT where you could add on different contracts. Now, this video is mainly to reinforce this concept in me. Um, you know, I. I don't want to blow through all the material at one time. That's not really my objective. I know I'm putting out a lot of videos rapid, rapidly, but that's only because I, I need to make money. And so I, I need the rapid development. Um, I have to rapidly and exponentially increase my understanding and my effectiveness because uh, I need to make income now. So there you go. So let's talk about using different ICT models and for entries and then for pyramiding out of exits. So let's assume here that we're on the uh, E-mini S&P 500 September contract five minute chart and the price swing here is from this point to that point. Okay, so the, we're looking at the, the pink box here and where we, can, uh, where we can first get into the market and then where we can start to exit. So the first model to look at is going to be a turtle soup. Okay, turtle soup entry when the market is is in a consolidation profile uh, is is oftentimes going to be the very first entry that you can get. So first contract in an ideal scenario would come on right here, and that would be a turtle soup model. It would be a sweep into short term liquidity. Okay, so it would come on right there. That would be the first contract. That would be a turtle soup pattern. Um, it would also be a ICT bearish breaker because we have a high, low, higher high that pushes into short-term liquidity. Now in addition to that, it is also coming into this wick, wick inefficiency from the left. So we can see that the midpoint of that wick inefficiency comes in right there and the 75% of that could also be a first entry. So a couple different entry models that would tell you that contract number one should come on right there. Okay, That would be contract number one. Now immediately we're thinking ICT bearish breaker because we have a high, we have a low, and we have a higher high. So contract number one comes on and then at that point we're going to use our standard deviation projections. So we're looking down at one to one and a half standard deviations and we really wouldn't expect it to go much further than that. So entry number one in this ideal scenario would come on at a turtle soup entry. Okay, or, a, or a bearish breaker block entry or a wick inefficiency entry. Either way you want to look at that. I would look at it uh, most likely as a turtle soup. Second entry or second contract probably is going to come on, okay, if we can get back up into this uh, order block. So we have a little bit of an order block here that formed. We also have this, it's not really a busy, it's an immediate, in, re, immediate rebalance, but it's also an inverted wick right here. That's where contract number two comes on. Okay, contract number two would come on there. It's an inverted wick inefficiency. It's also a little bit of an order block. Um, it's not really an order block since it's not paired with an inefficiency, uh, but it is a wick inefficiency inverting. Okay, so that's contract number two. Contract number three would be difficult to say. You might not even get a third contract here because uh, it doesn't trade back up in here. But contract number three could come on right here if you see that price is not trading back in and it's leaving that gap open. And that would be um, an idea that the market is going to come down at least one standard deviation. So contract number three could come on right here. At that point your cost average is right about 44.92. We're aiming for one to one and a half standard deviations. We're looking to see if there's liquidity to the left. So now we have three contracts on and our cost average is somewhere in the middle of here. Okay. And so if the market starts to move against us, uh, we're mitigating our risk with this cost averaging because 
the uh, average position should be on at about red line, so we're not taking as much drawdown if it comes up above red line. But let's say we have three contracts on here. At this point, we're probably done adding on contracts, so we're probably, this could, probably would be a three contract swing if we're taking on one contract at a time. And what we're aiming for, there's sell side liquidity, and there's one standard deviation. So there's our bearish, our bearish order block, one standard deviation move, and we hit our profit target. So that is it. That would be an example of one, two, three entries. Okay. Third entry is a little bit risky. I might not take that one on. That might just be two entries. Be pretty confident uh, about first entry. Uh, pretty confident about second entry. Third entry is not something I'd be super comfortable with. But definitely the target down here, one standard deviation, um, as well as sell side liquidity. Let's see if we have another uh, decent sized move here that has some different patterns that we can, you know, work with. Okay. Let's see if we go from point, starting from point A to point B, taking that as our swing. Okay. So how are we going to pyramid into this position? Now, this would be aggressive, and I might not do this, but theoretically, first contract would come on down here as that is a turtle soup. It's a short-term uh, sweep of liquidity. So see that we would have liquidity here below that 4480 spot 75. Um, so theoretically, contract number one could come on down here. Now, as we're swinging higher, we have a low, we have a high, and we have a lower low. So that is an ICT bullish breaker. Okay, That would also confirm a turtle soup entry. So let's take our standard deviation projections. Let's add on the well, I'm just going to leave it at 1 and 2. We can see the price didn't quite get there, but that's okay. We, we would aim for 1 and be thankful if we got up to 2. Okay, contract number 1 could definitely come on on red box if you're foreseeing, if you're anticipating a breaker block. It would confirm a turtle soup entry as well, and it's also an inefficiency entry. So you could definitely see that. Now, where would contract number 2 come on? We break this high, we trade back down into, it's not really an order block, it is, um, say, I'd have two contracts on here, or one contract, and I'm trying to f figure out like where would be a reasonable PD array to get on a second, a second contract. And it's difficult to spot, but I would say right there, okay? Contract number two could come on right there, why? Well, because that's a wick inefficiency that could act as support, and it does. So now we have two contracts on. Okay. Of course, if we make money on only one contract, you know, we get out of the market and we get back in, that's totally fine. Totally fine. So we form a volume imbalance. Trade back down. Okay. Third contract could come on right here. Why? Well, contract three could come on there because that was an immediate rebalance of Abyssi right there. You can see that little separation between those two candles. We're already projecting that the market should go up one to two standard deviations. So now, let's say that we have three contracts on. Now our cost average would be around there. Okay, and we're aiming for that 44.90 three quarters, and we're also aiming for that 44.94 three quarters, even though price doesn't reach that target. We're aiming for that. We'd have that in mind. Any opportunity for you to get on contract number four? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say that you would stick probably here with reasonably three contracts. Turtle soup entry, wick inefficiency entry, and then bissy entry right there. Where's the target with these three contracts? First standard deviation, couple of points. Second standard deviation that we didn't quite reach, but it would be profit target. Trail the stop up. And that would be a good example there of pyramiding into a position. Let's go on uh, and examine another price swing, this time a bearish one. So from point A, blue line, to point B, blue line. Okay. We have a high, we have a low, we have a higher high that pushes above short-term liquidity. That is an ICT bearish breaker. So, 
Let's use our standard deviation projections. Okay. All right, so knowing that this is a high, a low, and then a higher high that sweeps into liquidity, that is a bearish breaker. So how could we enter the market right here? First contract would come. So we're pyramiding into positions. We're kind of thinking, you know, ideal scenarios because that's really in live market conditions what we want to get in. Contract number one comes on there. It's a turtle soup entry, okay? Turtle soup entry, if we're expecting that the market should be rejecting new highs. It's also an ICT bearish breaker entry. Okay. Let's see where contract number two could come on. So we have an inefficiency here. We can see the price leaves it open. At that point, if we see the price is leaving it open, we could go short at the market right about there. So where the red circle is, that's kind of where contract number two would come on. Okay, so contract one came in up here. Contract two came on as we saw that this, at the market, this one would have to be market entry. Um, contract number two comes on in red circle. Okay. Do we get contract number three as we work our way down to one standard deviation? I would say that if you see that that inefficiency right there looks like it's going to be left open, contract three could come on right there. Okay. So now our average position is somewhere in there, 44.90 quarters, and we we have cushion for the market to come back and, and run against us before getting to the target. So that's three contracts. Anywhere where you could really push this aggressively and get um, get a fourth contract on, let's see. We have an inverted wick inefficiency right there. We could get in right there. So fourth contract, if you wanted to be really aggressive, and I'm, I'm really not saying that you should do this, short here or here. So that's where fourth contract would come on, and we're looking for a push down into liquidity into one standard deviation. And so that's how you could go one contract, two contract, three contract, four contract. As you trail the market down, you're following it down to one standard deviation, which you could see was also a push into liquidity. Now, that right there is dynamic risk management. You are taking the market in bits and pieces, so you're cost averaging in, you're pyramiding in. Uh, that way you're, you can allow the market to come retrace against you. You have more time to assess the situation. You know, keep your heart rate down. You know the target's going to be liquidity and one standard deviation. So is it, would it be as much money, okay, as if you put on the whole position here? No, obviously not. But you don't know that, that that's going to be a, a perfect turtle soup and this is going to be a beautiful swing. You don't know that going in. So you're just playing the market by ear. You kind of know what the target should be, but you don't know when it's going to reach that target. You don't know how much retracement uh, at, in the moment that it's happening might, you know, might form against you. So we're cost averaging in, being reasonable with our risk management here. That would be four contracts. We take that in this candle, we get covered. And that, my friends, um, is examples of uh, cost averaging into a position. I hope you enjoyed this recording. Um, I am partnered with Top Step Trader. Uh, I use the concepts derived from Michael Huddleston, aka otherwise known as Inner Circle Trader. Um, I am a student of his and trying to learn his models, trying to learn the risk management and pyramiding, cost averaging into positions. If you are interested in trading a combine, please use my referral link. And um, that is it, guys. I'll be back for more uh, recorded sessions soon. Bye.